Welcome to the stage, Morgan Reese, everyone! Hello, hello, Kalapum, how you doing, you right? Yes, lovely to be here, lovely to be here. Outfit's a bit wild, isn't it? <laughs> Yes, let me to be here. Headline about me, Morgan Release from Wales. Yes, Merthyr Tidville and the Welsh Valleys. Anyone else here from a shithole? I mean that gleefully. Give me a cheer if you're from a shithole. Yeah, hear the joy in their faces. Hear it. Because if there's anybody uh, thinking of having kids, don't move to a good catchment area. Don't move near your family. Move to a shithole. Why? Because now, as an adult, when I see weird shit, I don't blink. <laughs> I've seen it all. <laughs> you know, like when I was a teenager, my grandfather got remarried, and there was a 40-year age gap. 40 years. That's minging, isn't it? <laughs> He's 70. She's 110. 110? Old wedding. I caught the reef. But you know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, it's going good. Morgan Reese from Wales, Merthyr Tidville. I don't want the poverty porn it, but it really was rough. Really was rough growing up. I mean, bleak. As kids, we used to play a game called Dad. Dad. Is this relatable? Anyone here played Dad before? Oh, sorry, we called it Dad. You might know it's guess who. Ever that? Does he wear glasses? I don't know. Does he have brown hair? I still don't know. <laughs> but does he have a neck tattoo? Of course he has a neck tattoo! What are you on about? <laughs> but yes, I know, obviously rural, you know Wales, Merthyr, or Tidville, even smaller. There's more people here than in my hometown. <laughs> Back in my village, you can count all the families on one hand. <laughs> There's six. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> And this sounds like I'm making it up. I hear what I'm saying, but this is how rural and rough and bleak it is where I'm from. My first cousins married each other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Correct response, a fear of you. <laughs> the rest of you, a lot of you just went, and? <laughs> yes, yes, obviously there's a couple of faces that rightly glaze over, you know, I mean, people going, oh, he's just making this up. It's actually not legal. It's actually not legal. He fucking is. <laughs> And trust me, I checked. <laughs> oh, I checked so thoroughly. <laughs> you should now see my targeted ads. <laughs> Those cookies of your day. <laughs> All I get now are VPNs <laughs> and staycations in Norfolk. But here we are. <laughs> and if there's anyone here that works in marketing, it is London. If there's anyone here that works in marketing, you've got to hire my cousins. Why? Because they call themselves childhood sweethearts. No, no, no. Your cousins, you freaks. And yes, I am going to make jokes here briefly about cousin marriage. And I know in some cultures, that's the done thing. I'm not here to punch down another culture. That's mean, that's wickedly. If anything, that's cowardly. But this wedding, fuck. No, it wasn't arranged. It was deranged. That's what it was. Because obviously a cousin wedding, of course, is going to be weird. Of course, it's going to be cringe. But you are surprised where that weird and that cringe comes from. Even the wedding invite, my cousin Jessica was like, just give me a small wedding. I was like, yeah, it's one family. <laughs> and no friends. <laughs> but one Channel 5 crew. So what a day. You know what I mean? It was like it was so awkward as well, because the groom had his brother as his best man. And how awkward is it when someone invites an ex? Oh. Oh. And they're not the brightest as well, who are the cousin fuckers. They're not the brightest. You know, I think that's a general rule of thumb. If you're banging your cousin, you're dim. But just, but just, just the whole day, Jessica's going, hey, Morgs, I think I'm going to take his surname. I think I'm going to take his surname. It's your name. <laughs> Think it through, Jess, you look alike. <laughs> and they lie about how they met as well. Again, you would when you're banging a relative, wouldn't you? <laughs> well, how'd you meet? Nan's house. <laughs> so they fib, they fib. When he's got, oh, we just met online. You just go, oh, ancestry.com. <laughs> Swipe up the tree, did you? <laughs> 
And that's a good lie. That's a solid 2023 lie. Everyone meets online these days. I met my ex online. I'm not ashamed of that. Uber. Here we are. Me and Raj going strong. I always go in the back if you know what I mean. But hey, five stars. <laughs> Loves the tip. Hey, hey, I can make those jokes. I've bummed men. Anyone else here play rugby? Anyone? No, I'm a, I'm a bisexual man. I'm a bisexual man. Shot in the dark. Any other openly queer people in? Lovely, lovely, lovely stuff. Any closeted? Any of those? Go on, lads. I've got grinder backstage. We'll find you by the fucking meter. Don't you worry. I recognize a few of the top of these heads. But yes, I'm a bisexual man. Very proud bisexual man. It's been a big year for Morgan Reese. Finally got myself a boyfriend. Thank you very much. There's a proper 2023 meet cute as well. We met in the gym. <laughs> Toilets. <laughs> and, and it's going good, because I, I am a bisexual man. If you don't know what a bisexual man is, a bisexual man means that I'm attracted to both women and money. That's what... <laughs> and I always, I always knew, I came out late, 25, 26, but I always knew, like I remember at school, being in the school changing rooms and like seeing those broad shoulders and those muscles and that pubic hair. And I just remember thinking that teacher shouldn't be in here. <laughs> but <laughs> you get an inkling, don't you? <laughs> But it's all going, it's all going, it's a biphobia. Biphobia is very different if you don't know what biphobia is. I think a lot of people don't know that they're doing it. It's just little insidious things people don't know they're doing. It's people going like, oh, aren't we all? No. <laughs> There's some straight people out there. I've seen them, I've seen them. Ever been to a bet, Fred? <laughs> Ever been to a betting shop? <laughs> That's hetero heaven, that is. That's straight mecca. <laughs> Well, Mecca straight Mecca, but you're splitting hairs there. <laughs> but the other one, oh, people will be people going, oh, bisexuals, you're just greedy. Bisexuals, you're just greedy. I like to go, nah, you straight, you're just fuss eaters. <laughs> oh, the worst one, the worst one is because they think they're being so inclusive. Is the other people going, oh, I've thought about it. Oh, I've thought about it. It's like, oh, just because you thought about something doesn't make you that thing. You know, I've thought about murdering someone. <laughs> Doesn't make me a police officer. I'm a... <laughs> like I said, speaking of murdering people, I've got a teenage brother. Uh, oh God, I live with a proper dickhead as well. Has anyone else, has anyone here got a teenage boy? Wow. <laughs> Sorry, it wasn't, it wasn't a, a nonce lookout. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Yeah, that's how I'll get him. <laughs> but now I've got a teenage brother, and it's difficult. He lives with me. A uh, shield and complication with my parents since COVID. I live with my teenage brother. He lives with me. And the men I had, I've had to homeschool them for a long, long time. And I don't know whether we've got any teachers in here tonight, but my lordy, teachers in this country, teachers in this country need to be paid so much more money. <laughs> because they should work more during the year. I don't, Twelve weeks off, they finish at three. But <laughs> obviously you do an invaluable job, I can't mimic it. As well, and I had to homeschool them. And during the lockdown, I don't know if anyone else remembers, they didn't tell us how to teach the thickens. They didn't. <laughs> and he's the right side of thick. We did the tests, we can laugh. But <laughs> have you ever got a mate that's so thick, you, you sort of like a reminder that you can think in that way? Have you ever had a that's so thick they say something that wins you? They, they, they say something so stupid, you gotta go, give me a second. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I'll give you an example. Me and my brother one day were waiting for the bus, the number 36 bus. The number 32 arrived, and he just went, only four more. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> and obviously, I know we're 12 years apart, me and my brother. I know that's a blink of an eye. I know that's a blink of an eye. But when it comes to technology, the way it progresses, the speed technology progressive, he looks like Blade Runner to me. 
and it's all epitomized in the classroom. The classroom now, if no one's been in a classroom recently, big interactive whiteboard. Further than that is a tablet. Even sometimes it's an app. In the classroom, he learns on an app. I was brought up in the 90s. And I was brought up on a good old fashioned chalkboard. <laughs> a blackboard. Give me a cheer if you were brought up on a blackboard. Yes, this seat fetus has never seen one. And do you know how mental you sound? Has anyone here ever described a blackboard to a child that watches pornography on his watch? I sound prehistoric to him. Him going, oh, what's a blackboard? I go, we used to get rock from ground and rub on wall. <laughs> He's wanking on his Casio. I look <laughs> mental. <laughs> the big saving grace is I got to teach my little brother Welsh. Oh, I love the Welsh language. It's a beautiful language. It's brilliant. So he's GCSE age. So one evening we were doing Welsh animals. Not like that. We were doing Welsh animals, and here's a little crash course in Welsh animals for you. The Welsh parrot is parrot. <laughs> and the Welsh gerbil is gerbil. <laughs> it's a phenomenal language, isn't it? <laughs> but I don't understand how my head is still attached to my shoulders. When I found out, teaching my brother, what they're now teaching little Welsh children, what the Welsh jellyfish is. Does anybody know it? Piscotty, you wibbly wobbly. <laughs> Piscotty wibbly wobbly. <laughs> the Welsh for jellyfish. <laughs> but it makes perfect sense. It makes perfect sense, doesn't it? Because Piscotty is Welsh for fish, and wibbly wobbly is fucking nonsense. <laughs> There's a dad naming it, making it up at last minute, isn't it? <laughs> oh, Piscotty wibbly wobbly, point. That's all it was. <laughs> So I spoke to one of my Welsh-speaking friends. I said, it can't be Piscotty Wibbly Wobbly. It can't be. They said, oh, Moggs, it's not actually Piscotty Wibbly Wobbly. That's a name we've given recently. The actual Welsh jellyfish is similar to the word bitch in English. E.g., it's a nasty word, but it's also a name for an animal. But it's so much worse than bitch, we had to make up Piscotty Wibbly Wobbly. <laughs> so I said, oh, what, what is the Welsh jellyfish then? He went, oh, Moggs, you don't want to know. He's like, I think I... I do want to know. <laughs> and it's phenomenal. The actual Welsh jellyfish is not Piscardy Wibbly Wobbly. It is Cunt Amour. <laughs> and don't worry, we will break it down. <laughs> now, Amour means of the sea. <laughs> Do you have any takes on cunt? <laughs> yes, the Welsh jellyfish is cunt of the sea. <sighs> Coincidentally, cyclist is cunt of the road. <laughs> yes, the Welsh jellyfish is cunt of the sea. <laughs> Which I don't know about you lovely people, but to me, that sounds like an animal that was named the moment it was stepped on. <laughs> cunt of the sea, you kidding? <laughs> That reeks of knee jerk, doesn't it? <laughs> Just 10,000 years ago, a Welsh mum on a beach going, ah, you fucking cunt to the sea. <laughs> Little kid, what was that, ma'am? Oh, it's a bit scotty, wibbly wobbly, you never want to hear about that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you've been a delight to speak to. I'll tell you two things and I'll get off. Because, oh my God, I, I live in London now. I've recently moved here and I'm so grateful for that. I say that because I actually live in a nice place for, for once with friends. And oh, I didn't always get a chance to stay in nice places, especially not doing this job. The worst ever, the worst ever is the fact that I was once doing a gig in Swansea and I stayed in a youth hostel. <laughs> Youth hostel, Friday night. Give me a cheer if you've ever stayed in a youth hostel. Woo! Yeah, so we know we're talking. Give me a cheer if you've, uh, I'm sorry, if you, give, give me a cheer if you haven't. Woo! Oh, you're a few of you haven't. Well done for paying tax. Uh, <laughs> if you've never stayed in a youth hostel, important. It's like, that, it's like those bedrooms in Squid Game. Remember Squid Game? It's like 20 people to a dorm, <laughs> but with less murder. That's all it is. <laughs> 
Oh, it was awful. Because anyone here that has ever stayed in a youth hostel will know exactly what situation I was in. I was the middle bunk. Person below, fast asleep. Of course they were. They were drunk. The people above me, just a man and woman just going at it. <laughs> The proper going at it, like basic rubbish, dirty talk as well. The ones that make you cringe, you know. What I mean? Just this man and woman going, "Oh, you fucking love her, don't you? Oh, you love her, don't you? Don't look away, don't look away. Look in the eyes, look in the eyes. Call me daddy, call me daddy. Like, you know, I call me daddy. Call me daddy. I'm gonna wear you like a puppet, son. I'm gonna wear you like a puppet. <laughs> And then he, then he said something, and they just go, don't look away, don't look away, stay there, stay there. And I'm going, oh, I fucking hate this, I fucking hate this. And anyone that stayed in a youth hostel, they're about 10 quid a night, the quality of this mattress. With every thrust, they would just plunge towards me. So they sink in with his strangest strokes. Like I'm watching Wimbledon ice bees. Oh. And again, the quality of these mattresses, you could see everything through it. Who knew a mattress could be HD? <laughs> Honestly, I swear to God, he flipped her over one time. She pressed through like a carbonated hand solo. So, <laughs> mm. so you poor lady. Mm. And they're going for it, going for it. I'm dodging them, dodging them. They're going for it. And then he finished. And I know he finished because he said that thing we all say when we finish. He went, oh, sorry. <laughs> Oh it can't get any worse. It can't get any worse. It can't get any worse. And just when I thought it couldn't get any worse, he spat down the side of the bed, <laughs> lit a cigarette, <laughs> turns to his partner and went, did you come? <laughs> and someone on the other side of the room went, yep. <laughs> so, I'm very grateful to be here. I'll tell you one thing once again, I'll start off. I come from a family of very rich, of unconventional relationships. I think that's the safest way of putting it. You know, like, I'm queer, my cousins are banging. And, <laughs> but I did come from a family very rich of unconventional relationships. E.g., my grandfather did get remarried when I was a teenager, but my grandfather got remarried to a Thai bride. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love that. Because that's just a very much a very 2023 audience going, uh-oh. <laughs> Someone hamming the internet and tell me how to feel. <laughs> but no, I appreciate why am I rehashing this old trope about Thai brides. But there's no smoke without fire. It genuinely did happen in my family. So when I, when I was a teenager, when I was a teenager, my grandfather flew to Thailand and came back with a Thai bride. And I know nowadays that's frowned upon, but yeah, he flew. <laughs> And Thai Bride, it's awful, isn't it, Thai Bride? It reeks of se sexism. It's double standards AF, isn't it, Thai Bride? Thai Bride, because you don't call her husband the Welsh groom. <laughs> he's not the Welsh groom, he's the Welsh groom. Uh. But, uh, uh. but I do hate the word Thai Bride, and I know that's a stupid soapbox for a white guy like me to have. I hate the word Thai Bride because it tries to remove someone's identity. It tries to stick them with a label that isn't theirs. Because she isn't a Thai bride, is she? She's a woman. She's not a Thai bride. She's a phenomenal woman. She's not a Thai bride. She's not a Thai bride. She's not a Thai bride to me. She's my nan. <laughs> She's my 39-year-old. <laughs> Young Thai, surprisingly fit Nan. I'll be honest with you. Is this relatable? Anyone else is Nan fit? Anyone else you have a smoking grandmother? Anyone else? Anyone else you have a Nan? People would describe as here yeah, worth. Anyone else? My Nan is 39. That's a silly age for a Nan. I know. Anyone else's Nan got a student loan? Anyone else's Nan know the Fergalicious rap? Anyone else? This is, how, this is how young my nan is. If she was born in Merthyr Tidville, where I'm from, she would have gone to school with my mum. <laughs> my nan and my mum would have been at school at the same time. Because <laughs> my mum taught there.
And if anyone here knows family or like couples in that sort of dynamic, you'll know they sort of tend to divide their time between their respective hometowns. So Merthyr Tidville, where I'm from, and Sisaket, where she's from in Northeast Thailand. And it's wonderful when they're in Thailand. It's very family centric, you know what I mean? So that when they're there, they look after my nan's nieces and nephews, my nan's cousins, my nan's parents. <laughs> and also, her nan. My nan's nan. I've got a nan squared. I've got a nan squared. Anyway, my great great grandmother is 72. I'd be rubbish on that genealogy program. Who do you think you are? All my ancestors are still fucking alive! Shortest episode ever! Hey Morgan, we traced back your great great grandmother. I was like, yeah, she's on Facebook. <laughs> boca, boca. And thank you very much for listening to me talk about my young Thai nan, because I, kn I know it doesn't ring as relatable. It rings alarm bells. I know that. <laughs> And I would, I would love to do some relatable observational stuff on childhood, but it's my Achilles heel as a comedian, if I'm quite honest with you. I can't really do it because I didn't have the formative years of the general public. I had a very young Thai nan. <laughs> and my observations from my point of reference don't work. They don't work. Go, hey, guys. You know when you get to that age and you get that call, oh, Nan's been rushed into hospital. You go, fuck. You go, Nan's been rushed into the hospital. You need to get it. You got to get your Nan's been rushed into the hospital to give birth. Anyone else? No, remember your Nan's water breaking? <laughs> Put it away, Nan. No, anyone else? Anyone else in their family now got a six year old Thai girl called Auntie Margaret? And you want a little Thai Auntie Mags in their family? No? <laughs> Uncle as well. Three, David. Anyone else? A Thai David. Anyone else? Six and three. Auntie and uncle. Go in once. Anyone else? Oh, remember your auntie's first words. Oh, your auntie's nativity play. Boring. All right. Remember your nan breastfeeding? Your uncle. At the wedding of your cousins. Remember that? <laughs> no, ever, anyone babysat their Thai auntie and uncle though before? Ever done that? Ever looked after two screaming Thai children before? Ever done that? Ever put two screaming Thai kids in the back of a car that don't particularly look like you? Anyone done that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I do generally look after them. I babysit my Thai auntie and uncle when I'm back in Murphy. <laughs> And anyone here that's ever worked with kids, look at after the kitchen, look, kids love things that are big and bright, aka the supermarket. So I take my auntie and uncle to the big shop with me. And they are phenomenal children, my auntie and uncle. <laughs> they're great kids. And they're great because they speak perfect English. They speak perfect Thai. They also speak perfect Welsh. It's phenomenal. But they're also kids. So they're shits. <laughs> and they're shits in the most mischievous way possible. They are shits because they know I don't speak Welsh. <laughs> and they know I've been learning a little bit of Thai to speak to them. So now when I'm babysitting my Thai auntie and uncle, <laughs> and they want to say something they don't want me understanding, they speak my native tongue. <laughs> These Thai kids speak Welsh and I don't know what they're saying! <laughs> and I've got, to tell her, I've got to tell them off for speaking Welsh. <laughs> Which is fine because you lovely guys know the context. But to an innocent bystander, it just looks like the most racist assault that's ever gone down. <laughs> and, rightly, and rightly so, put yourself in their shoes. All they're seeing is this big white guy chasing two beautiful Thai kids around Iceland. Going, speak English! Speak English! Speak English! What are you saying? Why are you so don't hide behind there? What's that? They're spitting! Don't spit! Security's going, I think we fucking got one, you know. I'm walking out of the frozen goods with two Asian kids in a headlock going, I'll fucking send you lot home. I'll send you all home. Yeah, it's a bizarre way to end. 
Uh, if you've enjoyed that, I'm on tour next year at the Hackney Empire, May 16th. It'd be lovely to see you, but otherwise, you've got an amazing night ahead of you. Thank you very much, Abby Morgan Reese.